Well, I was asked to write a book, a uh, coaching book, a few years ago, and I've had ideas for coaching books for a long time, but never really felt the right moment. And then I was approached and asked to write a book, and I we thought a lot about how to offer something different. So uh, coaches, as they try to get better and they, they look for information, there's several primary places where you can get information. You can read biographies or autobiographies, you can read magazines or newsletters or blogs or podcasts that are quite popular now. Or if you go to college or take courses or clinics, you might find a textbook or coaching textbook. But we didn't really want to add another example of those things to the market. We wanted to create what I call kind of a bridge product. So it's it's a it's a, a place where you can work in the gap between research and practice. So researchers seldom talk to coaches. Researchers usually spend their time with other researchers and coaches spend their time with other coaches and we don't connect as much as we should to help each other learn and create better environments for athletes. So I tried to take the best of what we know from the science of coaching and athlete development and then the best of what we know from great coaches who do it and live it high school, college, Olympic, world level coaches, and put that into one place in that book. So right alongside research you'll have examples of how coaches actually do those things in practice. And we decided that we wanted to organize it by moments, coaching moments, because great coach, coaching is really about navigating moments, how you make decisions in these different moments you encounter as a coach. And no matter what sport you coach or what level you coach or anywhere in the world, all coaches share these four moments in common. All coaches build, they start with a preseason, they have to build a team, uh, bring a team together. Then they have their in season, which is where they spend the bulk of their time coaching and practices and managing competitions. And then there's an end of season, so that, that, that cycle or that season will finish. And that requires a certain um, certain things that coaches should be able to do. And then there's uh, what we would call an off season. So your preseason, your in season, your end of season, and your off season. And what we did with the book is try and put um, share what we've learned about what great coaches do in each of those four moments. I've been very blessed and fortunate to um, have had a lot of good feedback from the type of work that I've done, and, and the book's been. Um, well regarded and well received. So it's allowed me uh, to go and speak with coaches and learn from coaches all over the world, all different sports, from literally from A to Z. I'm not quite sure I have a Z yet, but I, I know I have archery and I know I have uh, yacht, yachting. So we have, I've covered and worked with coaches in virtually every sport you could imagine. And what it's allowed me to do is, is really see those common principles. So I like to talk more and more about what we might say best principles as opposed to best practices. So watching a coach in water polo do something that seems to work with that coach and that group of athletes in that context is not something we can just take and go and use with my soccer team or my football team. But there's a, probably there's a principle there that if I understand the principle behind why that works with that water polo coach, I might be able to use that principle to design a strategy or a practice that fits with my kids or my team or my sport or my context. So whether it's in Australia with cricket or New Zealand with rugby or Canada with ice hockey or wherever I end up, it's, it's, I'm always looking for those, those principles. What are those common themes? And then when I get a chance to work with coaches, we talk about those principles and try and create strategies that would fit best for their teams.